Hello friends, Kevin here. This is my 2000 Honda Accord. Decided I'm going to do some things to it, so I thought it might be interesting to do a little video series on it. I bought that car used a couple years ago from a actually used car dealer. I really like the looks of that car. Decided I was going to hang on to it. I'll explain a little bit more about it, but the car has one major problem. It is not the clear coat that you see on most of these cars. And here is the problem. It currently has no engine in it. I pulled that engine out a couple days ago, got it inside. Said, you know, you don't see a lot of videos about this platform. The engine that was in this was the four cylinder, not the six cylinder version of this. So that's what this is going to be. My wife has quite a bit of quite a few chickens and roosters so they're very loud you probably hear them inside and out throughout the course of this but let me take you inside and show you what we got going on all right now here we have the engine that was in that car this is the f23 a1 it was used in the sixth generation honda accords that's 1998 to 2002 single overhead cam VTEC inline four, 150 horsepower. When I started noticing I was having a problem with this car, it began with it using water. I'd have to put water in it about once a week. Then as the summer wore on, it started to blow through the overflow, the radiator overflow, park it, it just be hissing. And I knew all these were probably a symptom of a blown head gasket. So what I've done is taken the engine out of the car not just for the head gasket, I'll explain some other things that were going on with it as well. Got it on the stand, started tearing it down. They went pretty smooth. Well, once I got into the engine, this is what I see. Down in the water jacket, that is head gasket seal. So they've poured like a Lucas brand or something along that line head gasket seal into this engine. So I probably bought it with a blown head gasket, used car dealer, what do you expect? But that's okay because, like I said, I got the car, it had about 180,000 miles on it. The guy told me that he had bought this car at an auction. He noticed a knock after the fact. His son had wrecked a Honda Accord with low mileage, like 100,000. He put that engine into the car that I bought, and this is it. Check the VIN number on the back plate here, and it is not the same the once in the car, so this is not the original engine. So I believe all that. But the joke is on him. Like I said, the car had 180,000 miles on it, and now has 325,000 miles on it. I used, uh, initially bought the car for my daughter to go to college. Uh, became Her mother became worried about reliability, so we traded cars, and I wound up with this one, which I don't really mind. I like the car. So, I've used this car for a few years to drive it back and forth to work. It's 50 miles there, 50 miles back. So, I put quite a bit of miles on this engine. Can't complain. Cranked up every time. A couple little issues I'll explain later. That maybe, as we go, show you what I had happen to it. But nothing that ever prevented it from starting up. The car would crank every time. Bam, bam. You know, we're, we're bam. It would just run just fine. Well, after I decided I was going to park the car, I found out along the line that a blown head gasket, the engine that's using a lot of water, could damage the catalytic converter. So I decided I didn't want to go that route, try to find one of those in the junkyard or buy a new one, so I parked the car. It sat for a month, month and a half, and I went to move it, and I started to crank, and it wouldn't crank. First time the car has never cranked for me. But when it was turning over, you heard the wow, 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 wow. So I knew at that point, yeah, we're down on compression, at least in one cylinder. But the thing was, the car ran fine. Never had an issue with it. I don't didn't notice a power problem. So that's what's got us here today. Show you some other things I've done to the, this, this got us to the point where I decided to take the engine out. First thing was that, uh, a year ago, five-speed manual transmission, I replaced the clutch in the car. And you see the clutch is 
just fine. That still looks like a brand new clutch to me. But the one thing I did not do, I did not change the, or I did not get the flywheel resurfaced. So once I got everything back together, when you engage or disengage the clutch, you feel that chatter that's indicative of a flywheel that's not surfaced right. So that's one of the reasons I was like, I'm not going to just pull the transmission. I'm going to take the whole engine out. You see another thing on top of the transmission, quite a bit of oil. The engine had developed an oil leak out of the distributor. There's an O-ring that sits in there, and it just, this was clean a year ago, and you can see how bad that is now. So that was another reason I decided to take the engine out. And the main one was up here on the front. When you would jack up the right side of this car, it would, I mean, oil would literally dump out the side of the engine. I thought before it was probably that cam shaft seal up there. But you can see behind where the timing chain cover was, I saw clean and looks pretty good. So what we were dealing with was most likely a front main seal. So that's got to be replaced. I had another leak at one point. There's a whole other story there that had uh, caused a VTEC uh, code on the uh, check engine light. But I replaced the oil pan gasket when that happened. So that's all good. So I know it's probably that front main seal that's leaking. So what I decided to do at that point was get on to Amazon.com and see what they had as far as rebuild kits for this type of engine. And this is what I wound up with. Companies, I forget the name. I'll try to find it here in a minute. I had this complete kit for an engine rebuild for this car and show what it comes with. Both of the belts for the, cam, uh, the camshaft and the, um, the timing belt and the oil pump. All your tensioners that you need. In this box is a brand new oil pump, a new water pump. <clears throat> we also have a complete bearing set here your rod bearings, thrust bearing, crank bearings, all new pistons, wrist pins, rings, these, these go beside the, hold the wrist pin in the piston, and brand new pistons. All oh, this is no performance parts at all, these are all just standard specs. And it came with a complete gasket kit for the car, it's your head gasket here, it's a multi, what is it, multi-level? Multi-steel or something, multi-layer steel. It's got you know, like gas material top, bottom. It's got steel insert in the middle. It's like my oil pan. Some stuff that goes along with that. And then there's a valve cover, all the intake, exhaust, everything. I bought one of these kits before for a D15. Had everything. Everything works just fine. So that's what this series is going to be about. The next video is going to be me tearing apart this head. I'm going to check the clearances on the deck, pull all the valves, clean them. It's got new, I uh, should have new valve seals in there as well. Install those. So I'll show you exactly what goes into disassembling this and cleaning everything up and reassembling. I hope this is going to be interesting to you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will have some more videos up in the future. Thank you.